자. My line starts going even slower. So of course, in the meantime, the other line, more people started getting in line. And so I can't move back to that line because then I'd be even further back than I was to begin with. So of course they're moving forward, more people are joining and I'm stuck in this slow line now. If I'd have just stayed put, then I would have been checked out sooner than I thought. But you know, that wasn't too big of a cost to pay for my impatience at the store. But what if our impatience causes us to miss an opportunity that God wants us to have to be a witness or a leader? You could see how that could cost us big time. Well, today we're gonna learn all about more of that cost and patience and how we can ask God for help. But first, let's do a worship song. Let's go. You're doing a new thing, making my heart sing Bringing color to this brand new day It's never been clearer, you draw me nearer You're always with me and you're here right now My song, a melody Your perfect love for me My heart is full of praise
butter. Oh, hi there. I'm in a baking class over the internet. What was that from? Oh, uh, nothing. I'm, I'm doing a thing. Can you mute yourself, please? Yeah, sorry. My instructor is teaching us how to bake a cake from scratch. It won't take long, so just have a little patience and I'll be right- You should be done mixing the sugar and butter together, so let's move on. Ah! Patience is waiting until later for what you want now. After you've stirred in the eggs, add two teaspoons of vanilla. Gotta catch up. How much vanilla did she say? Hold on a sec. Excuse me, but excuse me what? Pardon. Uh, how much vanilla did you say? Two teaspoons, Graham, and then you add a cup of flour and fart milk. What was that? I, I'm sorry. I missed that last part. I think, oh, I, I think you're frozen. Hello? You're frozen. Maybe I'm frozen. Are we, maybe we're both frozen. Ah, I really don't like it when technology fails me. I'm trying, I'm trying to bake a cake here and you're just, ah, ah. And I have to wait until it unfreezes before I can make my cake. You know, sometimes we have to wait for things when we really, really don't want to. Just like in today's story. And sometimes, also like in today's story, we don't wait. I am making this cake. How much milk and flour did she say? I don't know. We'll see you soon. <laughs> oh! Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Genesis, chapter 25, verses 24 through 34. When Abraham's son Isaac grew up, he married a girl named Rebekah, but it didn't seem as though they'd be able to have children. Please God, give us children. But God answered Isaac's prayers and Rebekah became pregnant with twins. Isaac, I'm pretty sure they're having a wrestling match in here. Oh, definitely boys. Rebekah asked God about the struggle she could feel. He told her, Two nations are in your body. One nation will be stronger than the other. The older son will serve the younger one. When it was time for the babies to be born, they came out fighting. Esau was born first. He came out with a strong set of lungs and a head full of red hair. His brother Jacob was born moments later, still holding on to Esau's heel. How on earth did he manage that? The brothers shared the same birthday, but as they grew, that was about the only thing they had in common. Esau loved to roam far out into the wilderness. I would walk 500 miles and I would walk 500 more. Jacob preferred the comforts of home. The sun is so hot, I'll just take a little nap in the tent. Esau loved to hunt wild animals. That is one excellent wildebeest. Jacob preferred a different type of hunting. You, not you. Ha! <laughs> the perfect ripe honeydew melon. One fine morning, Esau headed out into the wilds in search of adventure and some nice juicy venison. <laughs> I'll feast tonight. But Esau went all morning without spotting a single rabbit. Ugh, should have packed a lunch. In the afternoon, he tracked a deer for hours, but he missed his chance as the deer sprang away. Ah! At last, Esau headed for home, defeated. He was tired and irritated and so hungry he could eat an entire woolly mammoth. Must eat food! As Esau neared camp, a delicious smell wafted out to greet him. Food! Jacob had been home all day, resting and plucking his favorite herbs from his garden. A little coriander, some dill. As evening approached, 
Jacob used his savory herbs to whip up a tasty red lentil stew and a batch of fresh, buttery bread. This will crisp up nicely on the hot stones. By the time Esau had arrived in camp, Jacob's stew was simmered to perfection, and the bread was hot and crusty. Food! Food! Esau lunged for the stew cauldron, ready to grab a bowl, but Jacob blocked his path. Not so fast. Step aside, I'm hungry. Clearly. Just let me have some of that red stew. Certainly. Esau tried to dive for the stew pot again. Ah, 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 ah. Just one itty bitty thing. What? Well, first, uh, give me the rights that belong to you as the oldest son. Esau spent more time listening to his stomach than his brain. So in that moment, his stomach won out. Look, I'm dying of hunger. If I die, those rights are pointless anyway. Now give me that stew. Esau sprang forward once more. Ah, promise to give me your rights. Fine. Fine what? Fine, I promise. Promise what? I promise to give you my rights as the oldest. Cool. Help yourself. Jacob stepped aside as Esau hurled himself at the stew pot. Stew! Esau happily gorged himself on rich stew and fresh bread. But as his stomach filled up, he had time to stop and think again. Esau had just traded the rights of a lifetime for a meal that would only last him a few hours. Let me give you a little advice. Don't bake angry. Instead of making a cake, you end up making a mess. That's what happens when you lose patience. You make choices you normally wouldn't make and it ends up costing you. Losing patience ended up costing Esau his birthright. His brother Jacob ended up being in the family line of Jesus, so who knows what all Esau missed out on by being impatient. When we don't learn to have patience, we get frustrated easier. With ourselves, with others, with technology. There's really nothing good that can come from being impatient. So think about that when you're waiting for your turn on a video game, or when you're waiting to say something while someone else is talking, or when you're waiting for the internet to hurry up and start working again. Having patience is better than losing it. Slow down. Or you could hurt yourself or someone else. Or you could end up covered in cake batter. <laughs> Here's the one thing to remember today. If you don't wait, it could cost you. If you need help waiting, ask someone you trust to come alongside you Bro, and see- are you there? Oh. Here. <laughs> You're not frozen anymore. I lost you there for a minute. Technical difficulties. I see. How's your cake? Uh... I think I'm gonna need another lesson. Very well. Same time next week? Sure. I can wait. I may have the place cleaned up by then. Pardon? Uh, nothing. It's a... thing. I'll see you next time. So, how much flour was I supposed to use? Two cups. How much did you use? All of it. Ah, uh, no, that was wrong. to wait for all the things that I want Sometimes I kinda feel like it's just taking too long To get the things I want What I think I need But I know you know what's best for me I'm gonna live what I believe I'm gonna wait Cause I know you're still working I'm gonna have patience Cause it'll be worth it I'm gonna have faith I know you have a purpose 
that you're working it out I'm gonna hold up, slow down I'm gonna trust that you're working it out 